Hi, welcome to this tutorial on interpretable machine learning for image classification with Lime. So if we have a machine learning model that predicts that there is a lab error in this image, Lime can explain to us that we are getting such prediction because of this region in the image. Today, instead of showing you how to use the Python library Lime, I am going to explain step by step how it internally works. Lime was originally proposed in this reference that I show here, but if you want to understand a little better the basics of Lime, I would recommend you to check my previous notebook where with Python code and with a video, I explain what is the basic idea behind Lime. Now for the case of image classification, uh, we are gonna start by importing some Python utilities for image manipulation, and we will use the, the pre-trained inception v3 model available in Keras. I am saving in, in this variable, now we are gonna read an image. Uh, this is an image that I found online, but you can also test with your own images. And we are showing this image here. Now, when we use the predict method in inception v3, uh, we get that uh, these are the top five classes or the top predictions for this image where Labrador Retriever is the top class. Now I am saving this, the IDs of those top predicted classes in this vector. Now for Lime explanations, the way Lime works is that it basically fits a local linear model around the instance that we want to explain. So if we want to explain this blue dot, Lime generates random perturbations around that, around that instance. It predicts the class of those instances and uh, fits a linear model. But that linear model is fitted, giving more importance to the points that are closer to the instance being explained, computing some weights based on a distance metric. More information of this process can be found in the tutorial I mentioned at the beginning. So for the case of image classification, we start by generating some perturbations of the image. In this context, perturbation means that we are going to compute the super pixels in the image and we are gonna turn on and off some of those super pixels. So here we are using the quick shift segmentation algorithm and we obtain 69 super pixels for this image. Now, to generate random perturbations of this image, we can just generate vectors of zeros and ones that enable and disable some super pixels. So here, we are generating 150 perturbations using this random binomial process. And uh, these perturbations, one of these perturbation vectors basically looks like this, where each position represents one super pixels and the status. Now, when we call the, when we create this perturb image, the idea is to call this function to pass the a perturbation and return or obtain an image like this one. So here we are just in, uh, turning off some of the super pixels based on the perturbation vector. Now, uh, at the end of the day, it's like we are generating 150 of these perturbed images. Now, we use the machine learning classifier to predict what are the classes of these images. In this case, we call the inception v3 method for each one of the perturbations, and then we call we get some predictions. These predictions is like 100, the predictions for the 150 perturbed images, and 1,000 represents the probability of belonging to each one of the 1,000 classes in inception v3. Now, we have two things. We have the perturbations that I showed here, and we have the predictions. So we can use this uh, to predict a linear model, but before we do that, it will be better to give more importance to the perturbed images that are more similar or closer to our original image. So our original image is just a perturbation with all the super pixels in one. So here, basically, we are measure measuring the distance between the perturbations and the original image using a cosine metric distance, which just measures the angle between these arrays. Now we have 150 distances, one for each perturbation. We translate these distances to a value between zero and one using a kernel function. Here, we pass a distance to a kernel function and it maps that value to a number between zero and one. So this is what I am doing here. I pass the distances to a kernel function and we get what we call the weight, this one weight for each perturbed image. Now we have three elements, the perturbations, the predictions, and the weights. We can fit a linear, a weight linear model with these three elements. This is what we are doing here. We fit a linear regression with X as perturbations, Y as predictions, but it's, instead of passing the 1000 classes in inception v3, we just pass the class that we want to explain, which is the top predicted classes or Labrador in this case. Now the sample weights, we pass them because of course we want a weight linear regression. Now the coefficients of this model, we have, we have one coefficient for each super pixel and the, the magnitude of that coefficient represents how strong is the influence of that super pixel on the prediction of Labrador. Now we can compute what are the top uh, five super pixels of top four. And we that is what we are doing here with the arcsor method. And these are the IDs or the top super pixels, the ones that have a larger 
magnitude in the coefficients that we saw before. Now, this is what we get at the end uh, when we show an image with only those super pixels enabled. And this is actually what Lime returns. Lime is telling us that we get the prediction of Labrador because of this region of the image. So this is the point where we wanted to get. And um, you can download this notebook or you can open it in Google Collab. So you don't need to install this in anything on your computer and you can play with it with your own images. The notebook can be found in my website. This is a, my, the URL and the blog section. You can find the post. And this is the end of the video. And I want to thank you for watching.